Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another interview. My name is Jessica Walker, and I'm joined once again with Robert from Cresco Finn, and this time Stanny from Ave. And we're going to be talking about these two gentlemen building the first regulated money market in crypto. Super exciting and innovative, and I'm excited to pick both of their brains. So, Robert, great to talk to you again. Yeah, nice to chat with you again, Jessica. And Stani, welcome on board. It's great to have uh, to finally meet you and have these conversations. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, Jessica. It's it's a uh, quite quite interesting company now with uh, with Robert here. So I think it's going to be a very nice chat. Exactly, and I'm really looking forward to it. And actually, I learned something even before we started the conversation because looking into Ave, actually, that, that Ave in Finnish means uh, means ghost, which is where you're from. I, I would love to learn a little bit more about Ave, the concept, just for our audience, just to get a grip in before we jump on in. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we, we we started as a project called uh, Eats Land, which is short for Ethereum Lending, uh, because we basically created the first lending protocol on, on, on this uh, decentralized blockchain. And what what happened is that uh, we kind of wanted to do more j- than Ethereum lending. So we we rebranded to Aave and, and Aave means ghost in Finnish. Uh, and we have a, like a ghost mascot as well in, in our logo. And the kind of idea there is that uh, it has two kind of uh, thoughts there. So, so, so one is that usually when you brand uh, like practically financial um, not just protocols, but any kind of products and services, you want to be very conservative because you're taking people's funds. You know, you don't want to establish the trust. But uh, when you're using smart contracts, you you actually don't take any custody of the user's funds. So, so practically you have more space to, uh, when, when it comes to branding and, and have more fun. And, uh, and the second thing is that uh, Ghost is kind of something that is that exists, but you know, it's it's not... Um, tangible in, in the sense that uh, there's no one like controlling the Aave protocol and, and, and it's, it's decentralized and, and it gives kind of like a, a interesting vibe. And also it starts with two A's like Aave uh, with two A's. If there is like a, uh, some sort of like a listing of, of different uh, protocols, we usually get like to be the, 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 the first one. So it, it has like strategic, uh, you know, also uh, point there but uh yeah that's 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 the whole story <laughs> and it has a it has a nice ring to it as well and something else i was looking into Ave and i was looking on the platform i was looking a little bit more into the work that you you're all doing and fantastic job so far and there was one phrase that came up which were was money market which is a phrase that actually you don't typically hear so often so i'd love to ask you uh what is the money market on, on Ave and how does this function yeah so now, uh, as obvious a protocol, it, it practically means that um, it's accessible to, to, to anyone in, in the sense that uh, a money market means that it's a, a reserve of, of um, uh, practically liquidity, which is some assets that, that we accept in the protocol as, a, as the other governance. And uh, it means that you can deposit different assets and earn interest on it and others can come and consume the liquidity. So it's, it's practically short term lending and borrowing. Uh, we, we, we've seen that the, the word money market doesn't fit very well because uh, you can do a bunch of other stuff with the protocol. Uh, but essentially, it's, it's all about uh, depositing and, and also uh, borrowing that liquidity. So that's, that's essentially is a, is, a, is a money market. It's somewhere where you put the money uh, for a while uh, to earn some, some yield, more or less. Can I just say, I love how you're explaining this because I think a lot of times when people talk about kind of managing their own assets, it, mm-hmm. it's a language which is quite difficult to understand. Yeah. And, and Sana, you do a great job at just kind of breaking it down so anyone can can understand. So first of all, thank you for that. And now, Robert, I want to turn to you and ask you. I confuse how, people, so. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. And, and I want to turn to you now, Robert, and ask you where Cresco Finn comes into this. So. Cresco Finns made the official proposal in the Aave governance form. Can you tell us where these two are really coming together? Well, Jessica, it really started beforehand because you know we're from Switzerland, regulated, we have an insured product. Our clients in the traditional space are people who don't like banks very much, like us, because you don't get very much in a bank, but they also want security. So it's one of the reasons with us, everything's insured. So we, we looked around DeFi for like, you know, a partner that would kind of fit with that ethos. And, you know, Stani and his team are amazing because they, you know, they raised their money back in 2017. They've been building through like, you know, whatever, 
bear market times. They're just, they're just builders. And even though Stani makes it fun with his ghost and whatever, you know, I mean, behind that, I think he has like, I think he has three or four, like really, really serious security audits. And, and that's really where, what our clients are looking for. So we, we're really excited to try and build the first regulated and also insured collateral money market in DeFi. And so we chose to do it with Ave. Fantastic, very cool. And I'd love to ask you about how the information is secured as well, because I know we touched on this in some of our previous interviews, but um, just to give our, our new viewers some information there as well. Yeah, sure. Well, for us, it's secured by Chainlink. I mean, because everything we do is in the real world. So we're bringing real world assets essentially to, to crypto, to DeFi. So obviously it's got to be, you know, replicated on chain. So we do that with, we do that with Chainlink and you know, the potential is pretty amazing, Jessica, because, you know, there's just some things that don't exist yet in crypto that are kind of the standard in traditional finance. And one of them is what comes out of money markets. I mean, essentially what Stani does at Ave is the basis for, I mean, it's the benchmark for what a lot of things happen in traditional finance. So what we're hoping might happen with our collateral, since it's insured, is if we add a time element to that, we might be able to essentially give higher returns for locking up your crypto for a little bit longer, which, you know, we're hoping will lead to like a benchmark yield curve in, in crypto. And this conversation is come at a really interesting time as well, because I know that there's, there's constantly this conversation on on regulation in crypto, where the regulation could potentially like stifle the innovation that we're seeing in the space, hinder the space or push it forward. Um, and I know recently that we saw that Brian Armstrong from Coinbase had actually said that the US is planning on introducing something uh, which is called the Swiss rule. Um, and I'd love maybe Robert or Stani, if you could give us a little bit more information on these kind of regulatory implementations, if they could affect or impact this at all as we move forward. Mm. Yeah, I mean, from from our perspective, uh, in terms of like regulation, maybe like the objectives that that kind of like we I, at 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 Aave try to follow and and kind of think about Aave protocol and and the whole like smart contract ecosystem is that uh, the the smart contract itself uh, they have uh, various properties and 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 because of the blockchain that actually kind of like a um, it, it aims to get the um, uh, same uh, result as regulation and and you can build in various kind of things that the regu reg that the the uh, regulation tries to achieve for example uh, in these smart contracts uh, you can build many things uh, investor protection consumer protection and you can build it even uh, in a better way that it actually uh, becomes becomes true so smart contracts, in essence, uh, once you deploy the piece of code, it's self-executing. So, so kind of like uh, if you enter into a smart contract agreement, so it's not a peer-to-peer -peer contract, it's actually peer-to-contract. So you're interacting with the smart contract. And what happens there is that uh, you can build different kinds of functions that actually protect uh, the users or uh, bring them some sort of certainty. Um, in our protocol, we, for example, we, we have collaterals that, that are used uh, to guarantee uh, the, the solvency of, of the depositors' um, uh, positions. And also there's different kinds of liquidation mechanisms if the value of the collaterals decreases enough. So, so this, this, this basic stuff that happens in, in traditional finance, uh, you know, in, in, in paper form. I, I mean, if you, go, if, if you go to a traditional bank and look at how the collateral management goes, they, they still pick the phone and call the client that we're going to liquidate. Can you refill your collateral? But in smart contract and environment, it happens uh, automatically. Those rules can't be changed. And this is very important, especially when you're doing global business, uh, you know, and you want to have global counterparties um, come together or use a, a protocol and you can apply and enforce the same rules. And that's kind of like the, the, the perspective that the smart contract helps. And, and what uh, Robert is actually doing with, with Prescoffin, they're, they're utilizing uh, the the uh, smart contract infrastructure for their advantage and, and lowering costs and, and providing efficiency for, for the users. For example, all the data on, on uh, DeFi is transparently available and auditable by anyone, by regulators, by end users, by anyone who wants to participate in the market. And I, I think th this is ex exactly plays an important role in terms of insurance that uh, Robert actually can ex uh, elaborate more. 
And so Stani's kind of Stani's kind of a funny character in DeFi, right? Because he has this background <laughs> in coding, like open source coding in this Finnish Linux environment. But he also has a master's degree in law, so he kind of knows what he's talking about when it comes to smart contracts. And it's a lot more refreshing trying to do something that's going to execute automatically on a contract than having to call your lawyer again and again and again. So. You know, it's it's really cool what uh, what exists on Ave, and you know we're a regulated entity, so we've been discussing it with our regulator here in Switzerland, and it's really refreshing. Like the regulator is actually very open to to how this all works. I mean, in many parts of the world, many jurisdictions, they're still fighting over regulation. Whereas in Switzerland, you know, my regulator has a specialist who's dedicated just to crypto. So it's you know it's really exciting here. And I was going to reference even the uh, the kind of the U.S. Uh, introduction of the Swiss rule. It just kind of even markets the Swiss standard of regulation as being that little bit higher in regard as well. So the fact that Kreska Finn is is Swiss regulated is is very exciting. Uh, well, so I now a, I know I know that I know that Brian's raising this as a concern. You know, for regulation, certainly uncertainty is a concern. It, it's it's kind of nice here. I mean, the the Swiss rule is not that onerous. I mean, it's essentially, you know, when you take your money from an exchange, you just show that it's your wallet. So you either have to, I mean, it's quite simple. The KYC, you just simply send some money into the exchange from from the wallet that you control, or you can send a little bit out from the exchange and then back. So, you know, for us, you know, our clients at the moment are all institutional. One of the reasons why we're doing the listing is is that we really want to develop a global community, but you know, our institutions, they're, they're definitely going to come to DeFi. I mean, the, we've already discussed this Aave governance proposal with a number of them, and people are excited to participate in it, but n- nobody's going to come if it's not regulated, unfortunately. So, Yeah, well, it sounds like you guys have a great structure and strategy ahead, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. So, so Stani, just finally there, because uh, Aave has been really busy for you. You've mentioned some of the stuff you're doing. There's also version two that you're looking to to implement with their crypto becoming totally decentralized. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about version two and, and what's next for Aave as well, looking ahead. Yeah, I think in, in terms of version two, uh, pretty much like, um, I mean, the version one has been, it, it was launched uh, back in January. And um, one of the ways to measure kind of like, uh, uh, a pro- not just protocol security, but also how, 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 uh, how successful the protocol is, not determining it, of course, like there's other success factors, is how much value the protocol holds. And um, since the beginning uh, of, of the year and today, actually, uh, we have roughly 1.2 to 1.5 billion worth of value locked in the smart contracts. And we build the protocol actually to, of course, like sustain um, like practically infinite, infinite amount of value, but we, do, we were expecting basically a few million. So it, the growth has been pretty, um, pretty intense. <laughs> but what's interesting is that the V2 it just allows um, quite a lot of new features. Uh, basically, you can swap your uh, collateral, which which basically means uh, your deposit into one to another. Uh, and, and also, practically, you can swap your debt position. If you borrow with one currency, uh, you can swap it to another. But more importantly, uh, it allows to create more efficiently new money markets, where practically the Cresco fee money market is coming uh, into play, so so practically using uh, real real uh, world value as a collateral in Aave and unlock liquidity into the traditional finance is is what will be available in in, in version two. And why it, this is important is that uh, when when you are able to use DeFi in your traditional uh, business model, whatever it is, uh, in most cases it, it's it's finance. Now, you practically have a, a very good uh, competitive advantage on what you're doing because you're uh, you're using you, you, you're you're basically using technology which is more more efficient and and you have constant stream of liquidity and and because uh, if if your business is actually lending you could actually also tokenize those those loans and, and put them back into the protocol as a collateral. And, and, and then uh, leverage more. So, so, so you have the ability to grow faster than anyone else uh, in the space. And of course, everything boils down to risk management and, and, and so forth and, and the other governance uh, kind of having the oversight and, and, and looking that, that basically, uh, uh, you know, the, the protocol is, is, is solvent and healthy and, and so forth. But in, in 
just in terms of like the business case perspective, uh, it's going to be quite incredible for, for, this, for the uh, startups and financial institutions that are going to use DeFi. Uh, and, and definitely it's going to be a uh, big thing. That, that's why like we, we are uh, heavily looking forward to, to, to the Crescofin market. And so you should be. I'm Rob, this is uh, one of several interviews that we've had the pleasure of doing now, and we have a few more that are coming soon. But for anyone that is watching this that would like to hear a little bit more about kind of Cresco Fin and the movements as they move forward, where can they go for some more information? Well, like Stani said, one of the things that we're doing is we've got a proposal on the Ave Governance Forum. So you can go to governance.aave.com. Or we're also um, we're also issuing uh, real equity tokens. It's the first in uh, first in DeFi for like a regulated company, and that's DeFi.crescofin.ch. Fantastic. Well, guys, thank you so much for sharing yourself. And just before we, we we end off as well, because you guys have told me this off air, and I thought it was it was the coolest thing. You actually played in the same tournament together in Canada a few many years ago when you both were, were younger. That was correct. Well, I'm a little bit older than Stani, but we bonded. <laughs> we bonded over like playing ice, playing ice hockey, and uh, you know, it's Stani, Stani's got a great background, but it's really cool that he actually he knew this small, small town or city in very small city in Canada that you'd only know if you're an ice hockey player. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, for, for me, it actually was like interesting. Like um, first time being in, uh, I think in my teens in in Toronto, and I, I was imagining that this is like I, I've actually finally found a uh, town that is that is basically colder than than uh, my hometown Helsinki in Finland so <laughs> it was pretty uh, pretty interesting in, in back in uh, Toronto uh, in my first time but like uh, it's it's interesting like uh, definitely like how 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 things connect uh, between like continents and and uh, and and you know there's many of of uh, uh, many kind of like things coming from from Canada especially in Toronto in terms of like uh, decentralization. I mean, uh, practically many of the uh, core uh, core individuals in Ethereum, for example, are from from Toronto as well. So that's that's kind of interesting perspective. And with DeFi, it practically means that uh, you can be anywhere. You don't have to be in Silicon Valley. Uh, you can be anywhere and participate or build or or create create the kind of like a next uh, you know protocol or or business model. So that's that's the beauty of decentralization. Yeah. So when Stani, when, Stani, when Stani said that he knew Brantford, Ontario, which is just outside of Toronto, like the only reason you would go there would be for an international ice hockey tournament. So yeah. it's really cool that Stani represented Finland, obviously, at like a ice hockey tournament when he was a teenager. Well, yeah, well, Finnish, Finnish team, not exactly the, the national team, but... <laughs> okay, but for your age, maybe. A Finnish team. <laughs> Amazing, guys. It was an absolute pleasure to catch up. Thank you all so much for your time. It was really interesting to shed some light. And I look forward to seeing your achievements in the near future. It sounds like we're going to be seeing a lot of Cresco Finn and Ave and their work together. So thank you so much for your time today. Thanks a lot, Jessica. Thank you so much, Thanks. Jessica. Thank you.